Amen. You are welcome to the presence of God in Jesus' name. The Bible says, Seek and ye shall find. You are seeking for the knowledge of God, the knowledge of truth. You will find in Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father, and good morning to you, Divine. We are praying that you will have your seat among us and answer your children in their needs, in their questions, in their desires. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can sit down. Now this time is given for questions and answers. Uh, if you have any question, it's time for you. Yes, raise up your hand if you have any question to ask. Stand up upon your feet if you have any question to ask. It's all right. Can you give them numbers? Now, one man, one woman, one man. One woman, one man. So start with the woman before you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. It's a great privilege to be a member of the Holiness Revival Movement worldwide. I am so excited. I thank God for the great and mysterious things that he has been doing. I have this question that has been bothering me and I need a clarification. This uh, bra that, has, uh, that is padded, is it hypocritical to put on that bra as a daughter of God? Praise the Lord. As what? Okay, daughter of God. Now, uh, let me ask. Are there people that are challenging the use of it? So, I, I just think that is hypocritical. How? Because I think that... Uh, we should use a neutral one that doesn't have any, any foam. We want to have a reason so that we will not be giving people laws of the Pharisees. We must be able to defend the, what we say by the Holy Scriptures. So I want to hear among the women uh, for and against. We want to reason together. To arrive at where the truth is the truth is that we should not commit sin anything that leads us to committing sin is defilement we should not use it we should not put it on but the truth also is that we should have the liberty of life for we are not called to bondage so we can't pick anything that we're not, we don't have a clear knowledge of it in scripture and stand on it. We'll be adding to the scripture. So I want to find out from the women what is padded bra? Should we use padded bra or should we not? Not among the leaders yet. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Padded bra is a bra with a foam. It gives you first look. It makes you have a large breast. It's not good for us to use it. First hood is in it. Just like a woman wearing a first book toss. Foam on the book toss. Praise the Lord. 
So there are women that wear foam on their bottoms. I'm not aware of that one. Ah, I saw, I really see heavy bottles in some women. So it is not natural. You know, I am a man. So I don't know that such things happen. Yes, any other woman? Okay. Praise the Lord. Amen. The issue of the padded bra, there are some parts that are obvious and those ones are not really good there are some bras that if no foam is inside as a woman if you wear a padless bra maybe ordinary one without pad it can even make your nipples to start showing as a woman or even causing lust to those looking at you so a bra should even have at least a padded material but a light one not a heavy one there are some that the bras are very heavy. You will know that this one is really artificial and they will make your breast so big and you are, you are wearing artificial bust. But there are some that if there is no foam at all, at least a light foam to hide your nipple as a woman for you to dress it in a godly way, I think that one is okay. It's not bad. Praise the Lord. Yes. Okay. Let me pick. Yes. Let's hear from you. Bring your microphone. Praise the Lord. Uh, so in uh, coming to the bra, the undies of the woman, it has different types. There is the one that is foamless. There's no foam at all. It's just the fabric. Then there is another one that has light, just a very little foam, just like my sister explained. Then there is another one that is called a push-up. That one, the form, even when you see it, you will know that this one is for a particular purpose. When a woman wears this, it pushes up the uh, breast and brings it up. They wear it to show their, uh, their bust. So, but for children of God, uh, a woman should wear a covering that should close her up well. A bra that does not have foam may be good for some, but when you have a woman that has, there are some people that when they are in a cool weather, their nipples get tingy. That it pushes out. Like I had a sister, she said, "Oh, Remo is not wearing a, a, a foamy bra, so she threw all her foamy bras and went to buy the fabric one." But each time she's leading in praises, you look at her, you see that the nipples are standing because she's sweating. So we had to advise her to buy this very light one. It's a normal one. There's nothing wrong with it. But the added foam, some of the bras come with an extra foam, small foam, that after the main foam, you still put it. There's another opening inside that it can be pushed, so you can push up the bra. For that one, it's not acceptable. But for the normal foam, it is okay. There's nothing wrong with it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I think the explanation is clear. There is the bra that is made to make you worldly if you use it. It is to promote worldliness. It is to promote your attractive, seductive look. Well, there is the bra that is normal. The form is light enough not to do these false things on your breast so let's go on that which is normal that does not give you a false look as our sisters have said is that okay thank you very much praise the lord thank you amen all right i want to take my question from i have two questions First one is from Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 25 to 26. He said, The graven image of their gods shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is in them, that is on them. Not take it unto thee, 
lest thou be snared therein, for it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thy house, lest thou be a costing like it. Out thou shalt utterly detest it, it and thou shalt utterly abhor it, for it is a costing. So the, the question here is that those who are arguing after this, and to them, according to the word of God, they are under a curse. And then when you give them the scripture, they still argue. Is there any hope for them if they don't take correction? Is there any hope for them to go to heaven? What is that scripture saying? He said, it is a costing. To do what? If you have put it on yourself, it means you become a costing like unto it. It means subject to destruction. We must give the scripture correct interpretation. Yes. Otherwise, we will not convince people. Is that okay? You have not interpreted this according to the context of it. If you force another meaning to it, the people will say no. That is not what that place is saying. Because they are also intelligent. They are not illiterate. The graven images of their gods shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the gold, the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein, for it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. It's a very clear thing. These gods' images are coated with gold and silver. When you see a god, an idol, beautified with gold and silver, don't desire the gold and silver and carry that image to your house for the purpose of gold and silver in it. Otherwise, the spirit following those things may end, uh, end up convincing you to worship that thing. So, but you should completely destroy it destroy it burn it with fire yes if you bring that idol that image to your house it's an abomination before the lord again don't take the goal don't say I will I will do my best to uh, remove the gold in the image and put it to any use. Don't do that. Burn it with fire. Don't take any particle of gold or silver in it. Don't desire it. It's an abomination before the Lord. What the Lord is saying, if a snake is carrying rat and you kill the snake, don't carry that rat to go and eat it. It's poisonous to your life. Because the snake has released its own poison into the rat. If you say, yes, I've killed the snake, let me carry the rat and go and cook it, you will, be, you, you will also face the poison of that snake. Don't do it. Kill both the snake and the rat. Burn them, bury them. Is it clear? Now, in this way, if you explain it like this, how would the people say no? So, we have enough scriptures to speak to us about the forbidding use of uh, rock, ju uh, rock jewels gold fashioned into the use of man 
in decoration of the body earrings rings bracelets chains there are enough scriptures so let's not take ambiguous scriptures to come to such things any use of this thing this idolatrous gold and silver is abominable but not gold and silver in itself because gold and silver is used in the making of vessels and other implements instruments materials that are not necessary for the are not for body use don't bring it to body use that is what the lord is saying amen in the book of numbers numbers chapter 31 the bible tells us about the gold forbidden for use the gold that is forbidden for use numbers 31 from verse 49 to 51 and they said unto Moses let me read from verse 48 and the officers which were over thousands of the host the captains of thousands and the captains of hundreds came near unto moses and they said unto moses thy servants have taken the sum of the men of war which are under our charge and there lacketh not one of us we have therefore brought an oblation for the Lord. What every man had gotten of jewels of gold, chains and bracelets, rings, earrings and tablets, to make an atonement for our souls before the Lord. And Moses and Eleazar the priest took the gold of them, even all wrought jewels. 52 and all the gold of the offering that they offered up to the Lord of the captains of thousands and of the captains of hundreds was 16,750 shekels now the children of Israel went out to fight against the Midianites. And these Midianites, being idolatrous, sinful people, were decorated with gold, earrings, chains, bracelets, necklaces, rings, and all. So the children of Israel, who had killed them, got these things from their body got these things from their body but apart from this thing gotten from their body they also had money which was also of gold and silver so they brought these things to offer to the Lord what did they offer listen to verse from verse 50 we have therefore brought an oblation for the Lord. What every man had gotten of jewels of gold, which are chains, bracelets, rings, earrings, and tablets, which is necklace, to make an atonement for our souls before the Lord. We want to appreciate how he kept us. None of us died. We're bringing this to the Lord. And then in verse 51, And Moses and Eliezer, 
the priest took the gold of them even all wrought jewels this gold when the, the gold when they are wrought performed they have to be worked upon to be jewels to become jewelry they have to be to be worked upon to be used as earring as nursery as chain they have to be taken to a factory to a blacksmith to turn them over to these items you use in your body which god condemns not the gold of itself which can be used in your house as money as valuable those ones are not condemned for for possession but the ones that have been wrought performed into translated by uh, men into items of beauty they are the ones the Lord is against don't put artificial thing for beauty for beauty is vain look at it in first Timothy chapter 2 first Timothy chapter 2 I read from verse 8 I will therefore that men pray everywhere lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting in the like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefastness and sobriety not with broided hair or gold you see this gold is what moses collected rock jewels which is for dressing don't use them women in your dressing don't use them they were given moses collected them to go again and transform them return them back to mere gold that can be used in the manufacturing of vessels in the house of god they can be put to other use that's why he collected them but not to go and put them on human being no it's not to go and put them on human being that's why he said women don't use them all this rot gold that turned to that are now jewelry because gold if you say other bible translation the word god here gold here is jewelry don't use jewelry earrings rings bracelets nurse rings chains and all don't use them they can be made of silver but it's the the whole spirit came for beauty scientists can talk, can use other things to form them even now clay can be used to form jewelry and it will look beautiful but it is for purpose of beauty don't go that way wow look at it again in the book of first uh, peter chapter 3 first peter chapter 3 i read from verse 1 to verse 5 first peter chapter 3 verse 1 to verse 5 likewise ye wives be in subjection to your own husbands that if any obey not the world they also me without the world be won by the conversation of the wives while they behold your chest conversation coupled with fear whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair that outward adorning of plating the hair 
and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit which is in the sight of God of great price for after this manner in the old time the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves being in subjection unto their own husbands here the Bible is saying if a Christian woman has an unbelieving husband let her not seek to impress this man by ungodly dressing by stylish hairdo so the man just as the halots do on the street or of decorating themselves decking themselves with gold that's jewelry back to the things the bible prescribed chains and bracelets and rings and earrings nose rings or all this kind of jewelry so it's don't use them don't impress your husband by them or wearing ungodly clothes the wearing of apparel putting on clothes and yes i want him to see and, and be provoked and love me and come to me and do this and you're walking it using it out around outside where people can see you this is evil don't do that so you can see it is forbidden here it's forbidden well they they think they would do this and look beautiful and attract their husbands no the bible says instead that but let it be the hidden man of the heart develop inner beauty the ornamentation the beautifying of yourself should be of the inside of the heart which is not corruptible all this jewelry and this can be corrupted but let it be the one of the heart which is not corruptible the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit somebody sub submissive to the husband without quarreling without competition without listening to instruction of the husband yes and then learn to be quiet not making noise shouting your husband spoke one word you spoke 20. no always making noise in the house always making noise shouting complaining no don't do that god wants a beauty of character in this way the holy women in all time dressed themselves and they became subject to their husbands if they go the way of beauty if you want to go to decorate yourself in beauty wear this wear that other men will be looking on you because when you throw honey in the ground everybody ants will be coming there other men will be looking on you and it will attend to your pride and it will tempt you to turn to other men to let them admire you it might even lead you to immorality so don't go on these items of beauty why in proverbs chapter 31 proverbs chapter 31 the Bible tells us there in verse uh, Proverbs 1 verse 30 Okay In verse 30 Favor is deceitful And beauty is vain but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. 
can you see it's the same scripture with first peter chapter 3 verse 1 to 5 beauty is vain you are putting on this you are putting on this you put on beads are still part of jewelry you are putting on this you are putting you do to flee great is useless you have no value before god it is the woman that has the beauty of the heart in the fear of god she is the one to be praised then some people come up to confuse other human beings with ezekiel chapter 16. let's go to ezekiel chapter 16 from verse 1 the Bible tells us saying again the word of the Lord came unto me saying son of man cause Jerusalem to know her abominations and say thus said the Lord God unto Jerusalem thy bed and thy nativity is of the land of Canaan thy father was an Amorite and thy mother a hitter and as for thy nativity in the day thou was born thy navel was not caught neither was thou washed in water to supple thee verse 5 again verse 4 again as for thy nativity in the day thou was born thy navel was not caught neither was thou washed in water to supple thee thou was not salted at all nor swaddled at all none i pity thee to do any of this unto thee to have compassion upon thee but thou was cast out in the open field to the loot thing of thy person in the day that thou was born this scripture the lord was addressing jerusalem although the people in jerusalem was in his mind jerusalem and all the people that were there he was addressing the city of jerusalem although the people also were there and he said verse 16 and when i passed by thee and saw thee polluted in thy own blood i said unto thee when thou was in thy blood leave yea i said unto thee when thou was in thy blood leave i have caused thee to multiply as the bird of the field and thou hast increased and waxen great and thou art come to excellent ornaments thy breasts are fashioned and thine hair is grown whereas thou was naked and bare what the lord is saying here he was talking about israel but he talked about jerusalem you who are there all together you were like a child that a, ch a woman gave birth to and threw her away because she didn't need it she threw her away to die nobody pitied you nobody caught your umbilical cord nobody did any of these things that makes a little child survive nobody did it but i came to do it for you i picked you up as a uh, a female child and did all these things for you yes in verse 8 now when i passed by thee and looked upon thee behold the time was the time of love and i spread my skate over thee and covered thy nakedness yea i swear unto thee and entered into a covenant with thee said the lord god 
and thou becamest mine. So when I, you were being raised up by my support somewhere, and I came around and saw one time you had become, ah, you had become a woman. You have developed mature breasts. You could be married. So I went in. I went to you and made a covenant of marriage, a covenant of love with you. He continued to tell what he, he did. Yeah. Then washed I thee with water. Yeah. I truly washed away the blood from thee, and I anointed thee with oil. I clothed thee also with braided wax, and shot thee with badger skin, and I guided thee about with fine linen, and I covered thee with silk. I decked thee also with ornaments, and I put bracelets upon thine hands, and a chain on thy neck, and I put a jewel on thy forehead, and earrings in thine ears, and a beautiful crown upon thine head. Thus was thou decked with gold and silver, and thy raiment was of fine linen and silk, and braided hair with braided work. Thou didst eat fine flour and honey and oil, and thou was exceeding beautiful, and thou didst prosper into a kingdom. And thy renown went forth among the, among the hidden for thy beauty, for it was perfect through my comeliness, which I had put upon thee, said the Lord God. But thou didst trust in thine own beauty, and playest the hallowed, because of thy renown, and poorest out thy fornications on every one that passest by his it was. Now, he, he now went ahead to say, I put everything that could make a person beautiful, I decorated you with this. For women, the worldly women, the things they use to make themselves beautiful to people, what are they? Earrings, bracelets, and other things. Gold and silver. So I decked you with this thing. I put earring on you. I put chain on you. I put bracelet on you. You became beautiful. And when you became beautiful, you went into playing hollow tree. Because that is the effect of beauty. In women, you went into, you went into playing hollow tree. And you left me and played the halo because I made you to be well known in the world. Some people see this and say, God permits or allows the wearing of these things, which He had condemned already. The question is Was God talking to a woman in this preach scripture? Answer me. No. Whom was he talking to? Nation of the nation Israel. The city Jerusalem. Now, if the Lord is talking to the nation Israel, the city of Jerusalem, where do you hang earring? Like, for example, now, the Lord is talking about this city. Where do you hang earring in this city? Is there a place you can hang earring? Where do you put chain over this city? Is that a place you can put chain? If they hang hearing and chains and bracelets in this city, will it make it beautiful? What? This is an allegorical statement. A figure of speech that the Lord employed a story. He employed an act which is done on harlots or on women harlots he brought it to jerusalem 
to the people of Jerusalem. What did the Lord do for this city? He invested mineral resources on the lands of Jerusalem. The mineral resources were mined by the people of Jerusalem to build goodly houses, to make beautiful streets, to bring forth various kinds of things. And the mineral resources, they gave them money so that they walked on Jerusalem and it became a beautiful city. And they too got, became renowned so when you, you you use my deposits in your land and acquire money and build goodly houses and establish many things people started seeing your beauty the hidden and started coming in and you collected them you received them and their idols and turn away from me and start serving idols that's just the whole story because this is not a woman allegorical or metaphoric statement it's a metaphor that god is using it's just like the the story used to communicate the love of the father to his children a man had two sons one of them came to his father and said father give me what belongs to me he divided unto them his living and he went on prodigal living and wasted everything when he came back I and mean, when he came to himself he said how many hired servants of my fathers have enough to eat and to spare i will go back to my father will the father receive him sure as he was coming afar off and the father pictured him the father ran and embraced him and changed his rags and put a ring in his hand and said let's kill the fatted calf and rejoice and dance for this my son was lost was dead now he's alive he was lost and is found and they began to be married some will use this story to justify many things oh they justify it. oh see it was the father that put the ring in the hand of his son ah get the story the story was a secular story it was an event of the world not event in the church not event in heaven it was an event in the world it's something that could come out from newspapers and jesus read it and wanted to use it to uh, to cause people to know the love of the father how the father is so ready to forgive you or else it was a manufactured story according to the happenings of the society that Jesus brought it up as an example as a story to pass an idea to pass a truth that's why he brought it out but if you begin to take those things one by one Jesus was not teaching acceptance of those things in the church in god in godliness and in righteousness why the ring as used there during the time of jesus was a sign of acceptance i have accepted you it was a sign of honor when people are giving honor to somebody we have honored you so bringing that example caused the society to understand jesus statement per proper but if he comes to the church he will teach just righteousness don't do those things you you are accepted by faith and not by ring 
you are honored in christ and not by ring in the society where christ doesn't live that they don't know christ they use other symbol yes they use other symbol to honor me but in christ we own you are honored by faith in christ by your righteousness and holiness that's why he said the wedding ring what is it for the society of men in the unbelieving world relies on the wedding ring to cause to to suppose that when somebody sees a man wearing this wedding ring that woman will not come near that man because he will say he's married already or if the man sees wedding ring in his hand he will remember that he has a wife and should not mingle with another woman or a woman wears wedding ring no man should approach that woman because she is a man's wife this is the thinking of the world but do we need that in the church the holy spirit is there do we now replace the holy spirit by a substance by no means how do we know that a person is married he says it are you married yes i'm married and that's all i'm married if the person if now you are a christian even if, if the person does not tell you he's she's married are you going to com commit immorality with her what stops you is it the ring in her hand or the spirit of god in your life the knowledge of the word of god in your life that word have i hid in my heart that i may not sin against thee wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way by paying attention taking heed according to thy word so it is the word of god not a substance that keeps the children of god in righteousness but in the world they want to see a sign the jews uh, demands a sign while the greeks are looking for reasoning but to god it is faith that is required so these are the teachings that will remove filthiness from the church of christ the man of god rightly dividing the word of truth and not those who confuse it and damn their hearers so that is what i have said to you give proper interpretation to scriptures so that they will not argue against it thank you very much thank you sir my i thank god god is working in our midst uh, in the night i couldn't sleep oh. i was just battling with no, god no. and god said look i've used my daughter to explain the danger of jewelry for body decoration but still here the people have doubt in their heart he said ask this question and then i will use my servant to give clear explanation for their understanding which the lord have just done just now praise god you know the bible says my sheep hear my voice my sheep hear my voice and what do they do and they follow when jesus told the disciples about the the doctrine of marriage the disciples says this thing is too heavy how can I, if the thing is like this it's better than it's better that somebody should not marry what did jesus say these things not everybody will accept it but those whom it is meant these teachings are for those who want to go to heaven it's not for everybody so if you say, say it as much as you will say it as clear and clearer there are people that will not take it but there are people that will take it praise thank the lord thank you very much my second question sir uh, we have been ministry since 2013 when this horror came out and uh, in worry here we worry we 
met with you we i think the first program i attended is uh, at a christ representative mission where you were invited by and also mommy leader by pfm i was there at that meeting in that meeting it was announced that there's going to be a program at liberate i came to you personally and said Sir, i had this pro uh, announcement where is liberate you directed me to pastor chris the pastor of liberate church who directed me and since then we attended that program with my wife and since that time after that program everything started turning around and we're doing away with those things and in ministry we also change our message and uh, since that time we continue with the teaching and also the preaching of the movement and god have been helping us and then the second question sir uh, now that if you look at the acts of the apostle chapter 26 from verse 15 to 18 and i said who art thou lord and he said i am jesus whom thou persecutest but rise and stand upon thy feet for i have appeared unto thee for this purpose to make thee a minister and to and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which i will appear unto thee delivering thee from the people and from the gentiles unto whom now i send thee to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of satan unto god that they may receive the forgiveness of their sin and inheritance among them which are sacrificed by faith that is in me so before 2013 as a pastor i was not operating in this mission assignment god gave to apostle paul but when we came into the movement as we listen to the word the message and the teaching and we follow up we are blended into this ministry that god gave to apostle paul for human salvation and um, certification and preparation for heaven through holiness and righteous living sir what will be your counsel to those who are ministers they say called by god who are not operating on this ministry and because they are not pretty they are not able to prepare souls for heaven what is your cancer to them sir well um we were okay let me say this let's say the president is hosting a program in this city in three years time and he said he is going to be a guest in a hotel in this city that is going to lodge in that hotel he's going to lodge in that hotel but that he is, he is allowing people to build new hotels because he has seen that all the hotels in this city none was fit for him to be to uh, to stay there so he's asking the rich men of this city to build befitting hotel for him and people go into competition of building hotel who is going to win i'm asking you who is going to win the acceptance of the president the give him microphone the man that the president accepted to enter into his hotel aha uh -huh. and such man how will he build his hotel he will build it to to satisfactory to the satisfaction. To standard yes he will the go to the he's a wise man that will go to the president and say what are the things you Quality. need in the hotel what is the pattern can you give me the blueprint can you give me the the plan can your architect give me the plan so I would do exactly what you want. 
That's the wise man. That man will win. Is that clear? Yes. But what about others who build uh, the way they imagine in their hearts? How will it be to them? Yes, will not be accepted. Why? Because they didn't build it to the standard or expectation of the president. They didn't consult the president. Yeah. So God allows people to start churches, raise congregation. He has the blueprint. He has the plan. The plan is the Bible. Let everybody do what he wants. When he comes, it is only those who live their lives according to his specification that he shall take to heaven. All others shall be abandoned and their members because they didn't build according to specification. Thank you. Sir, my question goes like this. I'm Mrs. Flora Ejure Ude of the cathedral. My question goes like this. They said we should teach our children. Discipline them when they are going astray. Later, the child started developing characters that are now palatable to things of God. How do you handle such situation? That's number one. I'm not still clear with the jewelry. Is it the wearing of jewelry for beautification that leads some women to halotry? Was that why God condemned the usage of jewelry? Uh, majorly, it is for beauty women used jewelry from the beginning majorly it is for beauty and hence the use of jewelry became as scripture announced it recorded it the use of jewelry was the practice of idolatrous women and harlots temple harlots all for beauty let's look at it in the book of Hosea. let me read from chapter one first so that you understand it Hosea chapter 1 from verse 1 the word of the Lord that came unto Hosea the son of Barry in the days of Uzziah Jotham Ahaz and Hezekiah kings of Judah and in the days of Jeroboam the son of Joash king of Israel the beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea and the Lord said to Hosea go Take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredom, for the land had committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. Take it this way. Hosea's wife was who? She was who? Go and marry a harlot. Then watch the dressing of this harlot the aim the spirit of harlotry is looking for men and so what they do is to get men the hunter that goes to the bush to look for animals what does he carry that which will make him kill animal so the harlots have that which will make her attract men now chapter 2 we have known the wife Hosea married. Chapter 2, in verse 13. Chapter 2, verse 13. And I will visit upon her the days of Baalim, wherein she burnt incense to them. And she decked herself with what? Her earrings. And what? her jewels and she went after her lovers and forgot me said the lord can you see the woman was a harlot can you see the dressing the practice the life of harlotry she was not serving god 
she was serving berlin what was her dressing she decked herself with her earrings and with her jewels other other rod gold rod jewels that's chains rings bracelets all what did she do that for she did that because she wanted to go after her lovers other men not her husband for immorality for her satisfaction for her gains she dressed this way so that her lover should see her beautiful woman and begin to become attracted the lord is saying christian women don't dress this way the holy women of all time never dress this way so but now it has become a tradition that not all women are putting on this thing for harlotry but the spirit that brought them to the world the foundation of it is harlotry and that spirit will still lay claim to any woman that he brought it because i the demon will say i was the one that introduced it they are my property that's what sister linda was telling you in hell the demon said you were using my property god's word is forever it doesn't change I mean, demons have their music is that so and they have their musicians is that so and they introduce their music and beating to these musicians to beat and cause the people to commit sin in the world when in the church a christian musician goes to employ the beating that satan is gave to his people and although he's putting the name change jesus 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 who, who introduced that type of beating to the world satan will he spare the church because that beating is a coded language that when it is beating grr, 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 demons hear it wherever they are and are flying there you brought it to church how many can stand those demons in the church clear away that beating we have holy beating christian beating solemn and righteous that will attract the presence of god and not demonic presence so it's the same remove those things out of your life they attract demons now in worry here one of our pastors there told us this story in some years ago he was using nicholas before he came to holiness revival movement and had this teaching his eyes open because he's a pastor of his own church pastor of his own church so he got convicted of these things and removed the necklace which he loved so much he removed it and threw in the waste paper basket in his room that night the queen of the course entered his house he saw it in a dream the woman went to this waste paper basket and picked the necklace and went away he woke up and went there it, it was no more there to tell you this thing are of the devil your prayer life cannot prosper your heart cannot understand the bible your mind is dull and darkened the lord is telling you the things that are responsible you went to the hospital and the doctor diagnosed you and said the reason why you are wearing away is because there's hookworm in your stomach that eats up the food you are eating and we have tested it from the laboratory see the hookworm will you say no if you say no go into your something otherwise if you accept here is the drug so that is it go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature he that 
believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Now the choice is yours. Will you believe? Or you will say, ah, we are used to this thing. The way I preach the gospel somewhere to an old man. Go and tell my children as for us, we are already used to this thing. We are all dying before you are coming. So go and tell our children. Are you going to go that way? The choice is yours. Don't force anybody. Husband, don't force your wife. Okay, the children issue. The Bible tells us in the book of Second Timothy. Second Timothy chapter 3 from verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers disobedient to parents children will become disobedient to parents now i heard this morning as my wife was telling me that the president of uganda banned gay marriage in uganda no man should marry man no woman should marry woman no man should have any relationship with man no woman should have any relationship in the same of all this sexual relationship so he has banned that in his country america also came up we have banned uganda nobody in that nation shall be shall have a visa to america are you getting it now in the last days so sin must be there by force and so the vice president of america is moving from nation to nation giving the people much money never to ban homosexuality lesbianism they should not in where in canada as she has said the president has come up that no preacher no preacher should do evangelism Praise the Lord. There is a law in Canada now that as normally we do evangelism, maybe this person is a gay or is a lesbian, somebody can walk up to the person and say, have you reconsidered your life? Come to the church. Jesus loves you. Stop this life. So now they have put a ban. Anybody that you are going to a gay person to tell them that what they are doing is bad, you are going to be in prison for five years. That is where the world is going. Is it when it gets worse before you will now consider Jesus? Consider him now. In South Africa, I'm told, and the teaching on which teaching children witchcraft. Sorry then. Praise the Lord. Actually, brethren, the Lord is coming. If some of us in Nigeria here, we don't know what is happening in other world. We just think that there is more time. But if you go to the internet and see what these lawmakers are bringing up, you yourself will know that you need to sit up. Because these are the things that will trigger God to come down and save the remnant. In South Africa, they have passed a law that adultery is free. If you catch your wife or your husband with a woman or a man that you don't need to kill her because they used to like maybe a husband will shoot a wife or what so now adultery is free if you catch your husband just walk away you don't need to fight you don't need to do anything to the next woman and the man too if you catch your wife with a husband you don't need to fight her you don't need to beat her you that will beat the woman you'll be in prison and then in south africa they came up with a, a course a new course that they are doing in america now even my elder sister was telling me she wants to remove her daughter from school she don't know which kind of thing is happening in the same thing is happening in, um, in south africa there is a law that they call a degree of witchcraft that you do the course it's a course it's a new course some of you have come across it it's a new course they will give you certificate the children are Suppose, like I say, language, you want to go and study Yoruba. What's now in South Africa, you can be, you can want to study master degree in witchcraft. 
So this is a cause, and they approve it. America is supporting it. And in America, you see little children in daycare. They are teaching them not to be afraid of Satan. You will see the teacher dressed like a devil. I'm going to show it to most of the youth in the youth conference. You see a teacher dressed like a devil, and they will teach the children not to be afraid if Satan comes to you, how to worship the devil. So this is what they are teaching the children now. The picture is everywhere. It's in a school now. Children are free to worship the devil. So, in the last days, perilous times shall come. Now, there is silent initiation of children going on in the kingdom of witchcraft and water spirits. And when these people are initiated, they have a stubborn heart. They have no fear of parents. No. They respect fear is dead. So, what do you do? This is going on in the spiritual world. But physical manifestation is coming. You know, everything that comes to America is going to the world. See, the women have already learned the dressing of America. It's coming. It's coming. So, which open witchcraft in schools is on the way through their money their power they are forcing this thing I learned they have successfully gone to some countries in Africa to stop the president from making any decree against gay marriage so that is what is happening ours is prayer keep teaching now the Bible tells us in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4 2 Timothy chapter 4 from verse 1 the bible tells us saying i charge thee therefore before god and the lord jesus christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom preach the word be instant in season out of season Reproof, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But wash thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. He's talking to us preachers, pastors, leaders. He says, preach the word now. Don't give time to tiredness and laziness and say, eh, I am busy. Preach the word whether it is season or out of season reprove the people exhort the people with all long suffering and teach the doctrines now because ah we can have people like this to gather it means there's still hope that we can still have a much people like this to gather there's hope if the preacher that has come here came with handkerchiefs came with anointing oil came with some other things and say yes yes collect collect yes ten thousand ten thousand ten thousand take mm. this place would have been filled upstairs filled everywhere <laughs> praise the lord Everybody will be running from city. He's coming to fall down. But you see how, because of holiness, righteousness, and truth, where are the people? Where are they? They're not interested. See the few we have. It will be worst with more years. It will be worst. Because these people are taking over the world by force. 
They are coming with power to take over the world by force. So we are doing it now. That is to save some before the hardened hearts will feel everywhere. That's what we are doing. May God help us to deliver many before evil strikes. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Yes, my question is still on the issue of ring. And uh, the scripture says that Eliezer that was sent to look for a wife for Isaac by Abraham put a ring on her nose that with this ring you are now married to Isaac they were the one that brought the wife but the bond of that relationship was with a ring so the question I want to ask is that place not still relevant to us today and when you go down again the ring is a symbol of love it started from the roman history it's a symbol of love that is endless which shows that the husband and the wife their love is endless and it goes into eternity now if a marriage is sealed though there are no biblical ejection or a place that is pointed that you must wed a husband and a woman together with ring but there are indications even when joseph in the land of egypt a ring was given to him as a symbol of authority so the question i want to ask all these things that relates to rings in the bible which some denominations are practicing is it a sin and two there are churches that use the word of god which is bible as a seal of marriage can that man or woman drop the bible and still commit adultery against the uh, the man or the man against the woman these are my questions okay in genesis chapter 24 from verse 1 the bible says and abram was old and well stricken in age and the lord had blessed abraham in all things and abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house that ruled over all that he had put i pray thee thy hand under my tie and i will make thee swear by the lord the god of heaven and the god of the earth that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, amongst whom I dwell. But thou shalt go unto my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son Isaac. And the servant said unto him, Peradventure the woman will not be willing to follow me unto this land must i needs bring my son again unto the land from whence thou comest and abraham said unto him beware that thou bring not my son tita again the lord god of heaven which took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred and which spake unto me and that swear unto me saying unto thy seed will i give this land he shall send his angel before thee and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from thence and if the woman will not be willing to follow thee 
then thou shalt be clear from this my oath. Only bring not my son Tita again. And the servant put his hand under the tie of Abraham, his master, and swear to him concerning that matter. And the servant took ten camels of the camels of his master and departed. For all the goods of his master were in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia unto the city of Nahor. Look at this portion of scripture. Abraham gave instruction. Did the instruction of Abraham include the things the servant should take in his journey? Everybody? The instruction of Abraham stopped on getting a wife for Isaac and that Isaac should not be returned to that land and he stopped there. The ten camels, Abraham didn't talk about it. Whatever the camels carried, Abraham didn't talk about it. It was the initiative of Eliezer, the servant of Abraham. And concerning Eliezer, the Bible has this to say of him in Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15 from verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abraham said, Lord God, why will thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. Eliezer was from where? Was God's covenant with Damascus? Was God's covenant with Eliezer? The covenant of righteousness. God established it with Abraham. And not with Eliezer of Damascus. So, whatever Eliezer carried was not the instruction of Abraham. Get it very clear. If you call Abraham and say, You're, you gave Eliezer uh, earrings, chains to go and give uh, Rebecca. He said, go and check it in your holy book. Whether the holy book referred, call my name. That I gave those things to Abraham. Was divine covenant of righteousness with Eliezer? Will Abraham be held responsible for what Eliezer did? Was it the king of, was it King Ahasuerus that condemned the people of Esther? He was not even aware. That's why when Esther was telling him, why, somebody has sold, uh, has sold us for death. He said, who? Who is it that has done this thing? Who? It means it was not himself. Now, let's go. Eliezer reached the place. He went to Mesopotamia and he prayed. He said in verse 12 and he said, O oh Lord God of my master Abraham I pray thee send me good speed this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Behold I, I stand here by the well of water and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. And let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I say to thee, let down their pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. And she shall say, drink, and I will give thy camels also. Let that same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. And thereby shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto my master. And it came to pass before he had done speaking, that behold, Rebekah came out, who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, 
the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. And the damsel was very fair to look upon a virgin. Neither had any man known her. And she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. And she said, Drink, my Lord. And she hasted and let down her pitcher unto her hand and gave him drink. And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels also until they have done drinking. And she hasted and emptied her pitcher into the trough and ran again unto the well to draw, to draw water and drew for all his camels and the man wondering at her held his peace to wait whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not and it came to pass as the camels had done drinking that the man took a golden earring of half a shekel weight and two bracelets for her husbands and for her hands of ten shekels weight of gold and said whose daughter art thou tell me I pray thee is there room in thy father's house for us to lodge in and she said unto him I am the daughter of Bethuel the son of Milka which she bear unto Naho, she said moreover unto him, We have bought straw and provender enough and room to lodge in. And the man bowed down his head and worshipped the Lord. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who hath not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth. I being in the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. And the damsel ran and hauled them and told them of her mother's house these things. And Rebekah had a brother, and his name was Laban. And Laban ran out unto the man and uh, unto the well. And it came to pass when he saw the earring and the bracelets upon his sister's hands and when he had when he had the weights of Rebekah his sister saying thus spake the man unto me that he came unto the man and behold he stood by the camels at the well and he said come in thou blessed of the Lord wherefore standeth thou without for I have prepared the house the room for the camels and the man came into the house and he unguided his camels and gave straw and provender for the camels and water to wash his feet and the men's feet that were with him and there was a set meat before him to eat and he said I will not eat until I have told my errand and he said speak on and he said I am Abraham's servant and the Lord had blessed my master greatly, and is become great, and he had given him flocks and hearts and silver and gold and men servants and maid servants and camels and asses. And Sarah, my master's wife, bare a son to my master when she was old, and unto him had been given all that he had. And my master made me swear, saying, Thou shalt take a wife to my son of the daughters of the Canaanites. Thou shalt not take a wife to my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, in whose land I dwell. But thou shalt go unto my father's, my father's house and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son. And I said unto my master peradventure the woman will not follow me and he said unto me the lord before whom i walk will send his angel with thee and prosper thy way 
and thou shalt take a wife of my son of my kindred and of my father's house then shalt thou be clear from this my oath when thou come um, when thou comest to my kindred and if they give thee they give not thee one thou shalt be clear from my oath and i came to i came this day unto the well and i said now and i said oh lord god of my master abraham if now thou do prosper my way which i go behold i stand by the well of water and it shall come to pass that when the virgin cometh forth to draw water and i said to her give me i pray thee a little water of thy pitcher to drink and she said to me both drink thou and i will also draw for the camels let the same be the woman whom the lord had appointed out for my master's son and before i had done speaking in my heart behold rebecca came forth with her picture on her shoulder and she went down unto the well and drew water and i said unto her let me drink i prayed it and she met haste and let down her picture for her from her shoulder and said drink and i will give thy camels drink also so i drank and she made the camels drink also and i asked her and said whose daughter art thou and she said the daughter of bethuel nahor's son whom milka bare unto him and i put the earring upon her face and the bracelets upon her hands and i bowed down my head and worshiped the lord and blessed the lord god of my master abraham which had led me in the right way to take my master's brother's daughter unto his son and now if ye will deal kindly and truly with my master tell me and if not tell me that i may turn to the right hand or to the left then laban and betuel answered and said the thing proceeded from the lord we cannot speak unto thee bad or good behold rebecca is before thee take her and go and let her be the master's son's wife as the lord had spoken and it came to pass that when abraham's servant had their weight he worshipped the lord bowing himself to the earth and the servant brought forth jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment and gave them to rebecca he gave also to her brother and to her mother precious things let's stop there praise the lord now who was rebecca was rebecca born again ever answer me no was laban born again no was betuel born again no terah abraham's father gave birth to abraham and naho as abraham came to give give birth to isaac naho gave birth to betuel so betuel gave birth to laban and rebecca betuel gave birth to laban and rebecca so laban betuel was a cousin to isaac so isaac was marrying his daughter although these people were not born again in the then world by what god was doing to form a new religion a new faith through abraham it is only these people who had relative fear of god that isaac 
could get a wife from. So, they had relative fear of God. Not that they were totally committed to the fear of God. Relative. And because, and it is said in the land of the blind, who is king? The one-eyed person. It's relevant. This does not mean believers should go and marry unbelievers. We are all having, we are in a kingdom of saints where we are children of God. You will find a child, a child of God. And the word has come out, be ye not unequally yoked with unbelievers. So when the, uh, Eliezer presented all he, to these people, they got convinced. But remember the earrings he put in Rebecca was done even before Rebecca was accepted to be a wife. It was not part of dowry. Well, after these people accepted, he gave Rebecca jewels of gold and silver and gave gifts to Laban. They released her to go with him. Had marriage be completed, marriage was not completed. Until Isaac will willingly accept Rebecca, marriage had not been done. You hear what I'm saying? At what point did Rebecca become a wife? At this point of what this man had done? No. Look at it in chapter 24. Genesis chapter 24. We want to see at what point Rebecca became a wife. To Isaac in verse 63 to 67 and Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the eventide and he lift up his eyes and so and behold the camels were coming and Rebekah lift up her eyes and when she saw Isaac she lighted off the camel for she had said unto the servant, What man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant had said, It is my master. Therefore he took, she took a veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all things that he had done. Can you read with me verse 67? One, two, go. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent, and she and he and took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her, and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. It is as he took Rebekah into his mother's tent that wife free got completed there rebecca became a wife when he took rebecca into his mother's house and slept with her marriage completed a man shall leave a woman shall leave father and mother and shall cleave it is the cleaving they did in the mother's tent is then the two shall become one flesh so if you are talking that earrings were given with all that was done in mesopotamia she could still not be accepted as a wife if isaac did not accept her she could still not be accepted as a wife so whom are you going to hold responsible for what, what that man did? That man did what is his culture because he is from Damascus. Rebekah and his people received those things because they were not, they were not the covenanted people brought into the secret of God of righteousness. And so you cannot count what is done in this dark city where God is not shining. To be what God allowed. 
or what God warranted or commanded. You can't count that. But from the marriage of Rebekah to Isaac, did you hear any mention of jewelry throughout her lifetime? Rightly dividing the word of truth throughout her lifetime. You never had the mention of that thing again. You didn't. Now, that is what we want to say. Number two, God begins with us and he does not lay cause us to know all things at the same time. Even in the school of learning, be it primary, secondary, or tertiary, the, the syllabus is not taught in one day. It's not taught in one week. It's not taught in one month. It's not taught in one year. It takes processes of time. And that which you have not taught, you can't set exam on it. To pass or fail anybody. In, that would be injustice. See it in the book of John chapter 16. John chapter 16 in verse 12 to verse 15 I have yet many things to say unto you but ye cannot bear them now who is speaking this I have many teachings but you can't take it now how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come he shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto thee. Can you see the pattern of the Lord's relationship and dealing with man? He cannot tell you everything in one day. He did not tell the disciples all the doctrines of the church. The Holy Spirit shall come and do it gradually, gradually until he delivered them as jude said the the faith which was once delivered unto the saints completed and paul came to say if any man adds to these things let the lord add to let the lord question that is it because it's completed now it started with it started and started and progressed until through paul the epistle to the church was written everything completed john's revelation must not alter what is written already it is now completed again when god jesus made appearance to paul the apostle what did he tell him in acts chapter 26 acts of apostles chapter 26 what did jesus tell paul verse 15 to 18 and i said who art thou lord and he said i am jesus whom thou persecutest but rise and stand upon thy feet for i have appeared unto thee for this purpose to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast heard uh, uh, has seen and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee. Can you see that? Now I'm talking with you. You are getting things as I'm passing. But I cannot pass them all in one day. I will keep on making appearances to you. To pass these things to you. That is what God said of Abraham. He did not complete knowledge. He did not give complete knowledge of truths 
righteous demands to Abraham. Look at it in the book of Exodus chapter 6. Exodus chapter 6 from verse 1. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand shall he let them go. And with a strong hand shall he give, I mean, drive them out of his hand. And the Lord spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. But by my name Jehovah was I known unto, unto them. But by my name, the power of God, the dealings of God that are, are under the name Jehovah. I didn't tell them, but I'm revealing it now. I am who I am. Go and tell Pharaoh. So, in case you do not take my explanation, number one, and you still want to argue, I take you to the second. See scriptural pattern. If Abraham says, I didn't know all the mind of God. He didn't tell me everything at my time, as he told you here. And so I can't write exam and be condemned of what I was not taught. And you ask God, why didn't you tell Abraham that jewelry was wrong? And he said, go to the scripture and learn my pattern. I told the disciples that they were not in the position for me to tell them some things. Abraham was not in the position for me to tell him these things. So what will you now say? We're dealing with eternity. Humble yourself and learn. Take it. They just shall live by faith. Earring is not life. Ring is not life. Life is Jesus. I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. You can deal without earring and live. I have not, I have, or with rings, I have not used ring all my life since I was born. And I am very much alive among you now. What heart has come to my life? Why wouldn't you train your change your tradition? Don't defend it. Now it comes. But the church has been practicing this wedding ring giving it out i will tell you how it happened it happened in the 12th century in the dark age not in bible time in bible time it has been condemned not of god condemned but in the 12th century as i read it it was introduced to the church what happened was that a philosopher which was like their own scientist that time, said there was a vein in the second finger of the left hand. And that this vein stretches to the heart of a person. So, I said, with that discovery, it is called a finger of love since love is in the heart love comes from the heart and since this vein connects the finger to the heart it is the finger of love with that society not just the church came to propound that since it is the finger of love and love should be that which binds a man to his wife a wife to his to her, has, her husband let us let every woman that has found a husband put ring in that finger it was only women men were not in, were not included every woman should put ring in that finger it is the finger of love so that is where the idea came as for the use of ring, it has, everybody was using ring long. Jesus gave a parable of it as for worldly use of ring. Now, but with advancement in science, a mod, modern science, or I call it modern because it came after this philosopher in the 12th century, came to carry out experiment to see really the veil with better instruments 
the vein that, the vein that connected the second finger in the left hand side to the heart they checked through and there was no vein then it becomes philosophy and the deceit of men which the bible says beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and through philosophy of men through tradition and philosophy of men which is not after christ but after the rudiments of this world to deceive you beware and that philosophy deceived people the church started adopting it but it was a deceit there's no vein like that but it continued and became accepted only women used ring to show that they were married they had a husband according to those philosophies men were not using it until the first world war when in america the men were going for war when they went for war many married women in, in strange lands they left their wife either forgot their wife or just married women in strange land so the wives went to the bishop or to church authority i'm sure it must have been anglican church in america and said we are wearing rings a symbol that we are married our husbands are not wearing rings so when they go for war they marry other people there please let the church command our husbands to put on ring also so from the 1930s men started using rings too in that same finger so now both men and women used use ring as a symbol that they are married to the law and to the testimony if they speak not according to scriptures what does the bible say what does the bible say there is no light in them are we going to borrow the philosophies of the hidden which the bible has warned us against vain philosophy are we going to follow the customs customs of men learn not the custom of the hidden for their vain customs that's why if we want to be holy we must go back to scripture and stand there any church from the history to this time that ventures to come out and say we're preaching the holy gospel jewelry must be removed any church up to this generation and god backs it up until our time the law will take people to heaven and to hell and speak that i'm against jewelry how many of you have this seen in revelation whether in america in europe in africa that the lord has been speaking to people against jewelry can you raise up your hand all over the world to back up this scripture otherwise people are not taking the scriptures again and are dying wedding ring in your hand forbids you from heaven it doesn't forbid you from christianity it's only you're not holy and without holiness no man shall make it to heaven you can be a christian you can preach and be baptized with the holy ghost for earth anointing is only for service not for heaven while anointing is for service holiness is for heaven so without holiness which means remove those things no are no man shall see the Lord. A woman first. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Last Sunday here, the fourth, my questions are two. We read of uh, the revelation of our sister, Finda, where Benin missed the rapture and he said the reason was 
unconscious sins. So I said, I have been worried since I said, what are unconscious sins? So if we can be enlightened and giving some examples so that we can examine ourselves thoroughly because we want to go to heaven. The second question is about our material. When I threw away all my jewelry and beads, those costly expensive ones from under the water, I had a rapper that had the, the drawing of coral beads, tomatoes, and other expensive uh, beads. So I said, I'm not wearing beads again. Why should I tie a rapper decorated with beads? So I destroyed one piece. But when I asked a sister, she told me that all those ones are designed, printed on the material, so they are not on my body. I'm not wearing beads or gold if I use that wrapper. But I have destroyed one piece. Recently, I discovered the second piece. So we, holy women, can we wear such designs like those carrying uh, musical instruments, uh, guitar, trumpets, drums, and the rest of them? That is the second question. Praise the Lord. I appreciate that you have gone that far. To the point that you are even seeing it in cloth and say, no, 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 this cloth is an abominable. You have gone far. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Definitely. When the devil saw that people were running away from earrings because of the light of scripture. He reduced it to a full stop. Just put something small inside to, so that the conscience of some people should bear it. Some people still cannot put the small one. It's okay. I will bring these stones to your cloth. Put it in cloth. Put it in cloth. You'll be wearing shining thing. The thing is shining. Blah, blah, to put on earthly glory. It's still a glory. But it's abuse of glory. You're disturbing the people of God. When the light like this reflects on it. Blah, 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 blah. What are you doing that thing for? You're disturbing the presence of God. Satan did it. So now they have come to put it on cloth in design. The Bible tells us that Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. We read verse verse 12 oh let me read from verse 11 to 14 of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered seeing ye are dull of hearing for queen for the time ye ought to be teachers ye have need that one teach you again which be the first principles of the oracles of God and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat for everyone that you said milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness for he is a bird but strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to design both good and evil the soldier is trained to be tougher than an ordinary man civilian by the exercise and the drills they pass them through the endurance trek climbing the mountain climbing the tree jumping to this side rolling this way it is a great suffering but that makes them rough tough and can handle tough situations in the society in the same way in christ 
there are babes people that cannot endure strong things when the children the disciples who stayed with jesus for three and a half years received from jesus that there are things i can't tell you now you can't bear them they are babes the bible says as long as the bridegroom is with the bride chambers they don't fast but when he is taken away from them they will fast which means they were not strong but when i go you are going to face toughness tough time it will make you strong you will you will come at strong thing laws to obey strong circumstances to obey and as you are obeying them you'll be getting stronger and stronger you get it a man saw a butterfly cocoon rolling on the ground rolling rolling so suddenly the head of the butterfly came out as it was rolling on the ground gradually the body was coming out rolling rolling he thought that ah, okay let me help you finish you so the remaining portion of the shell he broke it the butterfly died the mystery of god of life and strength is as it is rolling it is exercising power to face the world it is developing energy to face life you want to help him then you kill it strong meat belongs to them who are of age the strong word of god restitution abstinence from this don't use jewelry don't do this these things make a christian very strong it works on his christian heart purifies matures it and builds into that person the senses of understanding so that they are able to know the mind of god in other areas by obedience submission to the word that comes to the word your comes he that is faithful in little what will happen to him much will be given to him but he that is is not faithful in that which is small what will happen to him even the little he has shall be removed from him so these hard teachings you need them to be strong in your christian life you need them to overcome satan but people who don't receive them churches who don't receive them they don't know that their members scarcely are, are win over immorality their members in the government steal all the money they can steal but they still come to and rejoice in church why they have not been able to develop greater and stronger senses so we praise god for designing what the, our mother has designed that no i can't wear cloth that has abominable thing it takes maturity it's because you have been able to use others well that's what the lord is improving your understanding congratulations <laughs> now your second question Oh, belly him. Light on uh, unconscious sins. Unconscious sins so that you of can belly him. Well, that is the revelation somebody saw. Uh, I'm just explaining unconscious sin. Is that clear? In the book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 6. Hosea, chapter 4, verse 6 my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge i will also reject thee that thou shalt be no more priest to me seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy god i will also forget thy children what is the sin of ignorance the sin of what 
Oh, unconscious sin is the sin of ignorance. You are ignorant because you have not learned. You are ignorant because you have not been taught. If you see Benahin is right, who is putting on a ring, as long as he has not known that this ring is filled in it, he will be condemned for it. But nobody taught me. Abimelech, the woman you have taken is a man's wife. And as a result, you are but a date man. But Abimelech said, but I have, nobody told me. I even asked the woman. She said the Abraham was, his, uh, was her, her brother. And I asked Abraham, what, who is this woman? I said, it's my sister. I have no knowledge. You have no knowledge, but it's not an excuse. Ignorance of the law, completed brethren. It's not an excuse in our nation. Oh, I didn't know that this is a one way. Are you talking to a policeman? He has gotten somebody to get money that day. So you, you, that you are ignorant does not excuse you from a policeman. You park your car. There's no sign to show here that we should not. There's no parking now, uh, but no parking here. You are not aware. Oh, where I don't I'm not living in this place. I came from somewhere. Oh, you came from somewhere, but no parking here. Let's go to station. Simple. These church members that are not taught the full truth, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, that are being taught half truth, half no heaven. None of them. That sin of ignorance. They have no heaven. All of them. Because Paul said, we teach all men, warning all men, teaching all men, that we may bring all men perfect in Christ Jesus. We may pre present all men perfect. Be ye perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. People don't know the qualification of heaven. That's where they're, they're playing. They don't know it. Do you know? Does thou know that there is God? Even the devils knew and trembled because they came from him. But it's you here who don't tremble because you don't know him. Let's have the word of God with trembling and be afraid. As a result, if good comes our way, grab it. Don't play with it. Is that okay now? Praise oh. the Lord. Okay. Let's know what will happen. Praise the Lord. Uh, first, just a little comment. The discourse about the bodily adornment has seemed to me pointing only in the direction of the women so far. And I humbly submit that adornment of the body does not belong to the women alone. Sure. But I have just two scriptures I want us to examine. I want to put our fathers in the Lord. First, Exodus chapter 3, 21, 22. Exodus 3, 21, 22. And I will give, sorry, okay, let me start from 21, from 20, sir. From verse 20. And I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in the midst thereof. And after that, he will let you go. Verse 21. And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty on the land. But every woman shall borrow of her neighbor and of her, of her that sojourneth in her house jewels of silver, jewels of gold, and raiment. And ye shall put them on your sons and upon your daughters, and ye shall spoil the Egyptians. That is scripture number one, sir. Yeah. God is talking here. Yes, and I want 
our man of God to throw light on that. Scripture number two. Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14. Yes. Mark chapter 14. Maybe I begin from verse 3. And be in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper. As he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of white made of spink nard, very precious, and she break the box and pour it on his head. And there were some... Okay, let's, let's forget about that one. Now let's go to verse 6. And Jesus said, Let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She has wrought a good work on me. My question on this is this, sir. If somebody in this audience walk to my father and God now and give you something that looked like an alabaster, maybe in form of a perfume box, very precious, will you accept it, sir? Because here Jesus Christ accepted this alabaster as an adornment. And she, he approved it of that woman and recorded it against her that even anywhere they are going to talk about this script, scripture, her name will be mentioned. So, the first question is about the Egyptians plund I mean, sorry, uh, the Jews, women plundering the Egyptians. And this one, do, are we allowed to wear perfume? Because it's part of adornment of the body. Now, finally, I digress from the issue of adornment now to the first day topic and the second day topic. That the talks first... about the first day topic. The first day teaching okay, okay, okay. and the second day teaching that talked about the besiegement of the church. The, the besieging of the church okay, by Satan. Of the church. Yeah, yeah. I, I was thinking some questions should come from that direction because that is the main purpose of this gathering. Sure. Now, I, I saw that the besieging of the church was not a thing of today. It seems as if the besiegement of the church is biblical. Even in the New Testament, the gathering and the convocation at Antioch was as a result of besieging the church. People came with different doctrine and the church was to collapse and they went to Antioch and they resolved it. The contention between Paul and Barnabas was a segment of besieging the church to the extent that Paul and Barnabas has to part ways. Now, I'm just giving these small, small examples. Now, in our day, present day situation, when we are seeing fragmentation of the churches. I, I, when I was growing up as a young boy, I started listening to Pastor Kumiyi on Radio Transistor. There was no television then so much. The whole of place I was, I think there was no single television. It was only Transistor Radio in the early 70s. And we thought that when we see a woman dress the way deeper life people dress, it is heaven personified. But when we heard a life story from the man of God yesterday about what happened to you in deeper life, then we begin to think also that the bodily adornment alone does not qualify man for heaven. Because we look at the decoration of people from that side. So ah, these people have seen heaven already. But with your personal experience, which means there is still a vacuum, even as holy, in quote, as we look at that church. I was thinking that when you started your topic, that only Anglican Communion or the other Orthodox churches have this besiegement. But if we see fragment of it in a church as big as deeper life, I don't want to mention Church of God Mission, I don't want to mention Christ's Embassy, then where are we going to, sir, in terms of this business? Which way out? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, if you check the topic of our, or the title of our message, it was Satan's Search Against Christ Church Churches Worldwide. So it was not a, limited to a church. Against Christ Churches Worldwide. Um, everyone, every church has a way Satan has besieged them every church has a way Satan has besieged them now you have mission deeper life on don't take revelation 
other churches have their own other churches have their own worldwide do you understand now so we can't justify the power of either and uh, god wants not 99 righteousness but perfect righteousness 100 percent if you do all the law and offend in one point what does the bible say you're guilty of all so he that does not keep inner righteousness holiness and only dresses does that dress take him to heaven or take her to heaven no hundred percent so whichever church whichever individual must have hundred percent we're aiming at hundred percent it's only human beings do not know that what god expects is hundred percent they are only thinking we're, we're trying we're trying don't say you are trying the examination of god is objective answer all and don't guess if you guess and fail they will subtract it from your <laughs> from the remaining thing so that is it do all that is why teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you now let's come to genesis chapter 15 genesis chapter 15 in verse 17 to verse 18 and it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark behold a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces in the same day the lord made a covenant with abram abram saying unto thy seed have i given this land from the river of egypt unto the great river the river euphrates the river euphrates okay then let's start from verse 13 and he said unto abraham know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years and also that nation whom they shall serve will i judge and afterward shall they come out with great substance and thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace and thou shalt be buried in a good old age but in the fourth generation they shall come hither again for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full right from this time before Isaac was born even before Ishmael was born the Lord told Abraham be informed you are not only just going to give birth to Isaac, your, a child that is coming from your womb, and they shall multiply. They shall be in a strange land. And this strange land shall oppress them for 400 years. After the 400 years, I will come to judge that, that nation. Then, I am going to repay your children for their burdens, for their hard work in that nation. They will be coming up with great substance, great wealth, great riches. Amen? They were really in the land of Egypt. And the Egyptians oppressed them. And at the time they were to go out, the Lord judged them. One thing the Lord would do to fulfill his word, he was going to give them wealth, riches. And this brings us to Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3, verse 21 to 22. And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass 
that when ye go ye shall not go empty but every woman shall borrow of her neighbor and of her that sojourneth in her house jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment and ye shall put them upon your sons and upon your daughters and ye shall spoil the egyptians this scripture answers to genesis chapter 15 when he says i will give them great wealth and riches these jewels although the earrings rings bracelets and other gold substances they they they, they were given to the children of israel because God wanted them to pay the children of Israel of the labor they had labored in that land. Amen. One of the attributes of gold is that gold is malleable. It can be changed. When Aaron collected gold earrings from people, he threw them into fire. What did he bring out of it? A molten uh, image. An idol. So, you can melt gold into another substance. It can be given back to the smith to change its own form. And two, gold is money. Even up to this time. Is that so? You can carry gold to the bank to keep it for you. It's, 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 it is money. It's wealth. Because you can sell them. It's acceptable business. To sell gold. To go and mine gold. To buy mined gold. To sell mined gold. It's acceptable. And this business is still going on. Now, not only gold carry clothes receive clothes from them too and put them on your daughters on your children for preservation why this uh, favor God was going to collect gold in the wilderness from these people for the building of the tabernacle where he would dwell with them except he gave them favor to receive this gold how would he receive what would he receive to build a tabernacle because he gave a commandment in exodus chapter 30, 30, 25 35 and said tell the children of israel that they should bring gold for the building of my tabernacle and they brought the earrings the jewel the rings the air the gold of every kind for the building of the tabernacle and these were changed into various forms to make the utensils of the temple the rest kept as a treasure for them did they use these things again no more Sorry, let me get the portion out clearly. Uh -huh. Exodus chapter 33, from verse 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, Depart and go up hence, thou and the people which thou hast brought up out of the land of Egypt, unto the land which I swear unto Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, unto thy seed will i give it and i will send an angel before thee and i will drive out the canaanite the amorite and the hittite and the perizzite the hivite and the jebusite unto a land flowing with milk and honey for i will not go up in the midst of thee for thou art a stiff-necked people lest i consume thee in the way and when the people had this evil tidings they moaned no man did put on him his ornaments
for the Lord hath said unto Moses say unto the children of Israel ye are a stiff necked people I will come up into the midst of thee in a moment and consume thee therefore now put off thy ornaments from thee and that I may know what to do unto thee verse 6 everybody let's say it together one two go and the children of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments by the Mount Horeb. This is the first time the command was given. Clear yourself off of those jewelry. Get them out, stubborn people. They were using jewelry in Egypt as Egyptians because they didn't know God and God did not come to them with the teaching of jewelry you, they were pagans all together like the Egyptians until when the Lord visited them nothing separated them from the Egyptians even when Moses came to Midian what did they say of him an Egyptian came and watered our flood, our flock he was not an Egyptian but every dressing every behavior was of Egypt they had lived in Egypt, born in Egypt, grown in Egypt. So life was Egypt. So they were using this jewelry very peacefully. And God allowed it so. Even when they collected this thing, they put them on their sons and daughters, some of them. God allowed it so. But now, the Lord was introducing them into, unto his holiness. Here, doctrines will start he had come and given them doctrines from Mount Sinai the law had been read to them the practice of this doctrine must begin the practice of holiness tell them let them remove every man whatever jewelry ornamentation in their body chain, bracelet everything clear to both men and women clear those things from your body so they stripped themselves which means not a thing they did willingly peacefully mm, mm, mm. remove it remove it they, like a woman who pumped her hair and has seen the vision of the lord which said this thing you in your head is abomination to my kingdom so she's tearing it. remove 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 that's how they did to remove the jewelry from their body and then remember from here the lord commanded moses tell them no person should bow hall into his ears any longer i only allow a slave who has decided to remain with his master and not to be, not to go away in the year of release only that slave should bow hall it through his ear and the only one ear so by that commandment the holy women in israel never used jewelry they never used it so that is the scripture amen now in mark chapter 14 let us to understand the scripture in a better way let's also read john chapter 12 please chapter 12 from verse 1 to verse 8 then jesus six days before the passover came to bethany where lazarus was which had been dead whom he raised from the dead there they met him a supper a matter served but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard very costly and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment then said one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him. 
Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pieces and pence and given to the poor? Then he said, this he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the back and bear what was put therein. Then said Jesus, let her alone against the day of my burying had she kept this for the poor always ye have with you but me ye have not with you so this is talking about anointing Jesus with oil with ointment just as he said, with spikenard. Why did Jesus say they should leave her alone? In Mark chapter 14, he is doing a great thing. In John, my ba- he is announcing that I shall be buried. I shall die. And I will need embalming. And these things will be put in my body at that time. It's an announcement. The ointment, is it the body of Jesus that smells fragrance or the room that emphasis was giving on that smelled fragrant? That's the question I'm asking. It was the room. Emphasis is not on the body, but on the room. Scent, that type, that spike now is to arrest bad odor in a place in a room because maybe some people children urinate on the chairs so some latrine may not be too far or the latrine itself they may want to pour these things there to arrest bad smell but not in the body of a man remember it was only Jesus she did that to not to the disciples of Jesus they didn't need it if perform was required not only Jesus but the disciples since they prepared meat food for Jesus and his disciples the disciples have also partaken of perform but it is for Jesus it is a unique prophecy this man shall die and it is used to put on the body of a dead man to pre- preserve smell so that it doesn't smell bad to the people around this shall be used in the body of this man against the day of my burying was it done a prophecy that I shall die that is why she is doing now so allow her are you getting it now it is not then you ask if somebody gives you a cost a a, a spike knife like this can you take if he is say pastor take and go and put on your body i will say no pastor take and go and use in your house in various places that people gather that i will want to arrest smell we'll use it for we use uh, uh, this, what do we call them deodorant air freshener we don't we use it in our houses but we put it in our body or hang one in our body and be going so that people will smell it no we have adequate provisions of god he that adds to what god has done is a liar every word of god is true add, add down not to it less he gets all of you as a liar and the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against those who hold the truth in unrighteousness who turn the truth onto a lie this refers to those who palm their hair is that the natural truth truthful hair God gives you no you are a liar you have turn the truth of God into a lie what about your face and body were you really a fair woman as you are now no you use cosmetics 
to change your skin to this peasant skin you are a liar what about your fingernails these long fingernails that look like animals is it the type god gave you no you are a liar these false things in your life which god didn't give you by nature which you acquire because of worldliness because you are of pride of man because you want to conform to, to society you will suffer for it for all liars shall have their part which burn it with sulfur and brimstone which is the second dead let's rise up upon our feet and worship the lord we have really gone too far lord teach me your word lord teach me your word i want to know your word lord teach me your word lord teach me your word i want to know your word father teach me I want to know your word, Lord. My God. Lord. Teach me your way, Lord. Teach me your way. I want to know your way, Lord. Teach me your way, God. Teach me your way. I want to know your way. I want to follow you. I love to know your way. My God. Lord, teach me your will. Lord, teach me your will. I want to know your will. Lord, teach me your will. Lord, teach me your will. No. I want to do your will. Your will is good. My God. Hallelujah. Lord, teach me the truth. Lord, teach me the truth. I want to know the truth. Lord, teach me the truth. God, teach me the truth. I want to know the truth. I want to follow you. I want to follow you, Lord. Teach me the truth, my God. Eh... Hey.
Amen. Now, this book, Divine Revelation and Scriptural Exposition on Believers' Holiness, including an adornment, covers all these things I have taught. Just as our beloved minister said, these things are not only for women. Men also must be subject to the same word of God to keep off from these things prohibited. Yes. And teaching, bishops must not put on jewelry. It is not a commandment of God. God is not auto of confusion. Who has banned this thing and will come up in a later century to allow it? So both men and women should steer clear from these things. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, holinessrevivalmovement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through Him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe
You are the living Savior. I believe in you. I love you, Lord. I love you. I believe. I believe. 